Joining me right now is Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamak. She's a member of the Energy and Commerce and Agricultural Committees. Congresswoman, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. I know you traveled to the border for a hearing last week. How was it? What did you see? I'll tell you, Maria, it was one of the most ludicrous uh, pieces of testimony I have ever heard in my congressional career. The Democrat witness, uh, Rochelle Garza, she stated on multiple occasions that there was no connection between the open border policies and fentanyl pouring into our communities, even went so far as to say that she didn't understand why we were at the border, and even at points alluded to defending the cartels. It was some of the most unacceptable and insane testimony I've ever heard, which, of course, my colleagues and I, we were quick to shut that down. Oh, that's incredible. We know that the drug cartels are taking in billions of dollars on their human smuggling and their trafficking of drugs, and they are the ones who are deciding who gets in and who doesn't get into America right now. So are these hearings at the border going to do anything to, to help this situation? Because I know that your colleagues on the left, the Democrats, are boycotting the uh, action hearing. They're not going to show up. <laughs> well, you and I know, Maria, that if you care about an issue, you show up. That's the first step. And it's clear that they either want to play politics with people's lives and our national security, or they just want to sit at home and collect a paycheck. Hmm. But neither is acceptable. So that's why we're taking the fight to where it is actually happening at the border. You know, you hit on it. In my own district here in North Central Florida, I presented uh, Ms. Garza with evidence, photos of bricks of fentanyl that had the stamp of border cartels that had been found in my community. It is impacting every single community. But when you think about these hearings and what it's doing, it's shining the light on the problem. And the best disinfecting is sunlight. Mm. So that is where we're going to start the process. But then yeah. think of all the other issues that are at play here. HHS, for example, which is uh, Energy and Commerce's uh, jurisdiction, you have all those unaccompanied children that have gone through the HHS system that have no accounting for. So there is yeah. a lot that has yet to be covered. But first step is we've got to secure that dang border. Five million plus people apprehended at the border, Mike Baker. This is on Joe Biden's watch. These are just the numbers we know of. Just the numbers we know of. And and, and then you, you talk about the uh, amount of money that the cartels have been making uh, just over the past year and a half or, or so. Congresswoman, I, I, I applaud the, 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 the hearings. I think it, it is important, as you noted, to shine a light on this problem, to increase awareness. But in terms of action, aside from the individual states and what steps they're taking, particularly Governor Abbott in Texas, do you envision any real action coming out of Washington to improve the security at the border during the course of this year? Absolutely. You know, I, I know that people get frustrated. They see hearings, but then they say, what comes next? What's the point? You know, we in Congress, we have to do our due diligence, and we have a constitutional mandate for oversight. So a lot of this is getting to the bottom of it, putting it on record. All of the witnesses that appear before our committees, they are under oath. So you're laying the groundwork in ulti for ultimately impeachment for folks like Alejandro Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security. You're laying the groundwork for referrals to the DOJ, for uh, investigations and legal action to be taken. We don't have arrest authority in Congress, uh, so we can't, you know, go out and arrest people and do that. But we can lay the groundwork, really paint the picture. And then the biggest tool in our toolbox is the purse strings. We can actually stand there and say, you know, we're going to fence this money. We're going to do this. We're going to withhold funding here if you do not allow the people's house to do its work. So this is all very important. I know it's a kind of a, a labyrinth to get to the end game here, but... It is a very necessary process for our national security, our public health, and to address the humanitarian crisis that's playing out. I'm really glad you mentioned the purse because that's among the few levers you've got. You've got 12 appropriations right. bills. You've got to use those appropriations bills to either go with funding or not go with funding uh, to make the point no. or to actually divert the money because that's certainly one lever that the House can do. John Levine, jump in. You know, one of the undersung issues here is the issue of fentanyl. And I know I've spoken to border sheriffs who have used the term tsunami of death to describe what's happening at the border. And enough fentanyl has been seized uh, at the border to kill every single American in this country. And Everybody knows somebody who has been right. poisoned by fentanyl. And, right, and you see it here in, in New York City. People are people are taking um, fentanyl test strips to the clubs now to, to make sure, you know, that they're not going to accidentally die. Oh, my God. And, 
it's 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 a, it's it's a very tragic situation. Uh, what do you say about that, Cat Comic? Can you do anything about this fentanyl? It's coming from China uh, because the underlying chemicals are there, and then they send it to Mexico to produce and traffic it into America. Yeah, you know, when you think about where the, the raw materials for this product are coming from, it is China. Like you said, there's 160 factories that we have identified in China that their sole purpose is to manufacture the precursors for fentanyl. We've been able to track that supply chain all the way back to mainland China. We know the, the shipping routes. We know where they're sending it in Mexico. We know how it's getting across. And keep in mind that people keep saying on the other side, oh, 95 percent of all this is coming through legal ports. It doesn't deal with uh, illegal immigration. That's absolutely insane. We are only catching 5 to 10 percent of all the fentanyl that is being trafficked across mm. the border. And right. this witness, first hearing at the border, she stated that the Operation Lone Star from Texas DPS was a waste of money. Keep in mind that Operation Lone Star has uh, confiscated 361 million lethal doses of fentanyl. And she couldn't state unequivocally that that was worthwhile. She said that was a waste of money. Oh, my God. Clearly, she doesn't value life. Well, that's like the only thing that's being done, Operation Lone Star. I mean, yeah, and now absolutely. she's saying it's a waste of money. Congressman, thank you. We'll be watching the hearing and see what comes out of it. Thanks very much. Kat Kamek for joining us this morning. We'll see you soon.